I can relate to that talk. I think uh, like with creativity, I wouldn't trade my ADHD um, for anything. You know, it's it's difficult, but uh, I wouldn't trade it. You know, I met your son earlier, and he was a really impressive kid. It gave me an idea. What if we did like an Ignite DFW Junior, and we just had kids do that? You think we could? Would that be cool? Where's your? Hey, would you be willing to? Would you talk? Would you? See, we've got our first guy. Sweet, we're gonna do this. All right, our next speaker is the product manager for Tripcase, which is a leading travel management app. She's a veteran of the travel industry. She started her journey manage, um, she started her journey managing software solutions for airlines before taking her experience to the traveler side of the journey. Welcome for me, Emily Tate. I have a confession to make. I am a serial hobbyist. I'm sure this isn't much of a surprise given that the title of my talk is Confessions of a Serial Hobbyist, but it feels good to get that out. I come from a long line of serial hobbyists. My grandfather had the most amazing workshop built into his attic with all sorts of wonders. He had photography equipment, his own dark room. He had jewelry making equipment. He made this necklace I'm wearing. He was a ham radio operator, built model airplanes. A lot of people don't necessarily think of the greatest generation as the most tech-savvy group of people, but my grandfather would go to the computer auction, buy the parts, come home and build his own computers. Even into his 90s, he was tech-savvy enough to use an iPad and FaceTime me. So, yeah. This kept his mind sharp and gave us a lot of great stories. My father also inherited this gene. One of my good friends always says she can't wait to see what he does when he retires because she thinks it will be fascinating. This is the man who cooks and gardens and will build a bed over a weekend just because he can. Can tell you the entire historical roster of the Texas Rangers and is the lead guitarist of a classic rock cover band. And then there's me, some things I've been interested in, cooking, photography, piano, quilting, reading, running, uh, public speaking, you're kind of a part of this insanity. But the thing about serial hobbyists is not just how many hobbies we have, but the depth at which we attack those hobbies. When I started running, it, I didn't just go out and run. I had to learn about fartleks and tempo runs and marathon training programs and hydration methods. Also, I could be a really slow 5K runner and uh, occasionally run through some mud and stuff. If that sounds insane, it is. That's why this is confession. Another example, I told my father I thought it might be fun to get into vinyl. He thought, oh, it'd be fun to, to fix up my old turntable. And about three months later, his study is completely full of old turntables he's bought on eBay and is learning how to fix up so that he can resell them on eBay. It's not normal. But some hobbies can really turn into passions. I started playing the piano about two years ago, not really sure if I'd get into it or not, uh, but I discovered that I loved it. And now I play every weekend for a couple thousand people at my church. But some hobbies, actually most of your hobbies, won't turn into passions. I started gardening this year, and um, I, so far I've gotten about four pieces of okra, two cherry tomatoes, and five dead plants. But I'm taking the things that I learned from that and researching even more so that next year I can kill it, but in the good way this time. Um, so hobbies are vitally important to life. They expand our horizons and allow us to meet new people who are just as crazy or weird or fascinating as we are. They help us learn how to solve problems in a different way and solve some of the problems we don't know we have. So I hear people say, I don't have hobbies, my work is my hobby, but I want to call this out today. This is wrong. Our society has built up the notion that we should just have work at the center of everything and work should define who we are. And it's led to a world of unfulfilled, stressed out people who are grinding for the sake of grinding and it's got to stop. Get out of your, get out of your comfort zone and try something new. You don't have to go to the level of insanity of a serial hobbyist, but just try home brewing or buy a bike and go for a ride. Sign up for HelloFresh and let them teach you how to cook. Just try something. It will reinvigorate your work as well. I know when I'm going through particularly stressful times at work, I can pull out one of my hobbies and it will allow me to get my mind out of that churn cycle of the insanity of the office. And a lot of times I find that I'm actually able to process things better than I could before I took some time away from work. And then I end up solving the problems I had to begin with. 
And if you're one of those people who was able to take your hobby and turn it into a full-time career, congratulations. It's awesome. I am, I'm really jealous of you. But now, go find a new hobby because that thing you loved will start to have hard times and become stressful, and you'll need a new hobby to keep you from hating the thing that you once loved. I hear a lot of times this quote, uh, find three hobbies you love, one to make you money, one to keep you in shape, and one to be creative. And this is a great way to go. But I want to offer you an even simpler mantra today. I want you to find just one hobby, or three, or 12. It doesn't matter. Just try something. I think you'll find it will refresh your soul, reinvigorate your work, and maybe even give you a delicious cupcake if you decide to take up baking. Thank you.